welcome to Baguette Baguette. I'm TK, Terry Kaufman, an American living in France for the last 22 years. And I'm Marie-Aude Merigui, born in Paris, and well, I've been living here my whole life. We wanted to make a podcast about everything we love about France. French food, French music, French culture, you name it. Enjoy the episode. Today we're going to be talking about music. We decided to look into the greats of uh, French music singer-songwriters. So we're going to be looking at Jacques Brel, Georges Brassens, and Serge Gainsbourg. So, uh, by the way, we're not experts, but hopefully we'll give you the desire to have a listen to these guys. Yeah, actually, Terry, once I started researching them, I realized I could have spent months looking at everything that they did, wrote, and, and sang. It's so fascinating. Yet there is something that... When you were born here in France, or maybe even in French-speaking countries, uh, there is no ignoring them. Even though they could have been my grandfathers, I grew up listening to their music. They're in my ears. Yeah, exactly. So listen, don't worry if you, are, our, our dear listeners, don't know who they are. That's fine. Don't worry. I really didn't know before moving to France, but they are really the singer and songwriters that defined, I would say, the 50s, 60s, and all the way into the 70s. So let's talk about who these people are in particular. I'm going to give a start with Jacques Brel. Uh, Jacques Brel, number one, he's Belgian. He's not French. I think that's important to know. So if we make the mistake later on, I don't get too mad. Um, most people, when you think of French music, I think we think of Edith Piaf uh, because of the mo different movies that her music has been in and the, the non rien de rien and for me Jacques Brel I would say he's the male version of Edith Piaf he's a very similar style with an orchestra behind he's got this amazing haunting voice and he's just incredibly emotional and it's kind of like hold your beer I'm just going to make you cry I'm going to make you feel something you're either going to sing with me or you're going to cry with me but uh, gosh gosh darn it you're going to feel something um, so he's, he's famous for writing a number of songs that uh, that reach beyond English and he's very kind of you know he's very inspiring for a lot of people they David Bowie sang his songs, Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, even Nirvana with uh, seasons, uh, seasons of the Sun. So uh, end of his life, he also became an actor and started, directed a few films as well. 25 million records sold. And the rumor is that he never sang a song he didn't write. I'm not sure if that's true, but that's the rumor. Yeah, uh, actually, there is something you were talking about Edith Piaf, and I found out something about her uh, saying that about Jacques Brel's music, that it was so intense, so emotional, and he, he would depict the feelings and love so well that it should have been a woman that have sung all his songs. She was like outraged that she, that he would do the job, but he did it really well, actually. Yes, he did. Uh, why don't you tell us a bit about Georges Brassens then? Georges Brassens is a French singer. He's from the south of France and he's... Well, he, he has a slight, he's a contemporary of Jacques Brel. They were born slightly in the same years, in the same decade, uh, in the 1920s. And he's, um, he's very important in France, Georges Brassens, because he was a great poet. Um, he was all about just his words and his guitar, his acoustic guitar. And that was it. And he built everything on it with how well he would play with the language. And he was um, both a witness and also he would um, talk about society in a way that was very provocative and very new and very modern at the time. And with a quality of poetry that was that that is difficult to uh, to reach even nowadays. And so, and maybe there is a link between all those three. And so with Jacques Brel, you just mentioned, it's how well they would use French language to talk about feelings, relationships, society, uh, just mentioning things that would work or not work in the way society was built. And also they talked a huge lot about women and love. <laughs> That's true. So we have the singer uh, in Brel, and we have kind of, I would say, the poet in Brassens. So who is Gainsbourg? I would say he's definitely a fantastic songwriter, and, but he's also the musician of the three. Yeah, well, I mean, all of them are musicians. And I guess you were saying about Brel that he's reported to have sung only the songs he wrote. I guess it's true also for Georges Brassens and Serge Gainsbourg. They they have written hundreds of songs and they all three of them are musicians, except that Gainsbourg is the one that for sure has visited um, more uh, genres in music, jazz, uh, the uh, UK pop, um, reggae. reggae. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also he was a great fan originally of Chopin and of classical music. So it, it would 
be heard in his music as well. And yeah. so, yeah. V Gainsbourg, very prolific, 550 songs written, uh, linked mm -hmm. to beautiful women, from uh, all the way from Brigitte Bardot to his, his wife, Jane Birkin, to Vanessa Paradis. Um, incredibly adaptable, I would say, like we already said, a lot of different kind of music. Uh, quite a party guy, too, because he had a heart attack at 45. He hangs on, he keeps drinking and smoking up to five packs a day for another 20 years. Uh, so he definitely had a lifestyle, I would say. Uh, but when he died, he was uh, a real hero for France. Uh, even the president said he's our Baudelaire, our, our Apollinaire. He elevated song to the level of art. That's um, pretty good. They were storytellers of life of these days. Mm -hmm. So it was really relatable. Their music was really relatable. But how about you, Terry? Why did you want to talk about those three specifically? Well, in fact, I came across a picture one time with uh, Brel and Brassens, and I thought it was Gainsbourg, but in fact, it was a, another singer who's called Ferrer. And in my mind, I guess I just took uh, Ferrer out and I replaced him with Gainsbourg. And I thought that was an amazing picture <laughs> because they're really people you just can't escape. I mean, having lived here in France for a certain amount of time, you just you just can't escape their music. And you can ask, like, who is that singing? Like, you know, for the first year or two or three or four. But after a certain while, it's like, bah, c'est bah, Brel, bien sûr. You know, you, you kind of don't want to get it wrong. You know, you kind of need to know who these three people are. And they're pretty different from one another. I mean, they're singer-songwriters, but um, each describes maybe a different part of, of, of French culture, I would say. And uh, I think that's the kind of interesting thing to, to develop. They're all very verbal and they're all very witty, but they do have their particularities. Yeah, there are. But even Gainsbourg, um, even if, if he wasn't in the picture, <laughs> but they all of them, they share, uh, they are from the same generation and they are three, four different examples of how you could tell the truth in different ways, in very new and modern ways at the time of that generation. So how can we tell them apart? Well, to tell them apart, I would use general observations rather than a very specific scientific knowledge because I don't have that knowledge about them, as we said. Uh, yet, we could observe things such as Jacques Brel is, is the intense one in the way he sang, uh, in the way he would put like all his heart and soul in the moment of singing. And when he was on stage, you could tell by the way he was sweating and very intense. <laughs> Um, Georges Brassens is very easy to tell apart from the others because he has a very acoustic sound. It's like it's just a guitar and a man yeah, singing. Definitely. So it's very easy to identify that this is Georges Brassens. Sure. And as, as for Serge Gainsbourg, his sound is richer. No, I'm not saying better, but he has the Gainsbourg sound is richer because he has experimented and, and tested so many different types of musics. And he has taken the more risks exploring things in music and traveling. And so you can hear it in his sound. Yeah. And also he has a voice that's very specific where towards the end, he would rather talk than sing in his recordings. <laughs> Definitely. Um, for me, I mean, uh, I think you got it totally right with Brel. It's all this idea of emotion of, you know, he's either crying or sweating or, and it's kind of like, you know, you know, I'm, I'm going to blow your hair back with my amazing voice, you know, hold on. <laughs> and uh, so it's like, it's also a different time. Uh, this is, uh, you know, this is, was in the fifties, but it really feels like it was in the thirties. You know, it's a different time of music, I would say. Yes. Um, Brassens, uh, he feels like a folk singer, but he's also kind of naughty. You know, he's kind of telling a lot of dirty jokes sometimes. Yeah, so he's got a, he's, very he's kind of got a sweet little smile. You know, he's a very smiling voice. Um, and you're right. It's just that little guitar that's kind of plunking away. And there's not much going on as far as music, but as far as uh, writing, there is a heck of a lot that's going on. And Gainsbourg, is, uh, I don't know, he's got this kind of cocky, cocky smile when he's singing. In his early part of his career, he's just kind of saying, I'm singing this. You like it. I know you like it. He's also, then he went through this kind of catchy 60 grooves phase, uh, which the other two really don't have at all. Mm. And, um, you know, would, yeah, that 60 grooves phase plus the reggae albums. And it's, it's like, ah, oh, there's something going on with this guy. He's, he's, uh, for me, he's definitely like, we've already said the, the most uh, musical of the three. Yeah. So what do they have in common then? Well, as a matter of fact, I think that they have a lot in common. First, the, the main thing which is major about their music is how they approach the French language. All three of them were at first poets. As, as teenagers, they would be uh, not that good at school, but already dreaming of a life made of writing poems, telling stories in a beautiful way of using the French language. So that is the major thing that they have in common and that they've done well. And that is the legacy they, they left uh, to me for 
French speaking and even abroad because they were translated in many other languages. They also, all of them have in common that they were for their time and even for today, very provocative. They would talk about society, about different classes in society, relationships between people and, and specifically relationships between men and women in a way that was um, very dairy and even for today. Um, so that's, that's a, in a way that was Again, very specific to one another, but they have that in common. They had ways to yeah. tell it. And they also, I think, all of them are very good storytellers. They <laughs> tell stories. I, I think for me, there's also like a, an idea of different parts of, of France or not even, well, we know Brel is from Belgium, but for me, um, uh, Brel, uh, I was asking a cousin of mine who's French and he said like, you know, what do you think about Brel? And he says, when I think of him, I'm thinking of being in a, like in a cafe in the north of France and everybody is around the piano singing these, you know, fantastic songs for like, you know, that last eight minutes long, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and look for, so for me, Brel really represents that kind of northern France or, or Belgian kind of, uh, kind of feeling. Uh, Brassens is, he's definitely not Parisian in my, in my mind. When you listen to him, it's more rural. He's like kind of like a farmer guy. Uh, it's kind of, it's like we said already. It's a little bit, um, you know, kind of mocking, mockingly dirty as well. Like, uh, uh, and then Gainsbourg has that. He's very Parisian for me. He's very kind of oh, yeah. haughty and aloof, and very. He knows he's charming, and he's very insouciant, uh, and he, he he's very Parisian in the way he writes. So the kind of this kind of like north of France, this kind of rural France and Paris, they all kind of represent a different part. You also said um, at one point they're kind of rebels and anti heroes in a way too. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. They very much are uh, the the antihero um, because you know we we are talking about a time where uh, the word would be admiring someone like Frank Sinatra who was beautiful. He was classy. He had like the man had everything, even the voice. And all three of them, their voices are not especially the ones that would be the perfect. Um, voice of the time. They had something a little bit different. Physically, they were not good looking. Um, mm. The charm they had was truly not about the looks. Um, mm. So there is something about the aura that they had, something, the rebel, the bad boy, and also the tortured poets. Um, it's the it's, it's the bad boy, but it's also the intelligent bad boy. It's the one who's smarter than you, who can kind of, you know, talk you in circles, you know, and it's not that kind yeah. of bad boy who's going to beat you up, but he's the one who's pretty malin. He's pretty, he's pretty smart. And, and if you're not careful, he's going to, you know, twist your words against you. And I'm thinking of Serge Gainsbourg in, in, in a particular, uh, yeah. in particular, I find. It's true. You talked about Frank Sinatra. And one of the questions we like to ask is, is there an equivalent in the U.S.? Um, and in fact, this is really hard to compare. Is it jazz singers? Are they folk singers? Are they country singers? Even for Brassens, I was looking into country a bit to try to find, a, to try to find an equivalent in the U.S. It's, it's tough going, in fact. Well, actually, I find it very difficult to uh, imagine an equivalent for those three because it's like in other countries, for example, um, you have bluegrass in the United States. It would be difficult to translate it into um, another country because it is so linked to the culture, the time, the people, the way they live. So it's difficult to, so it's difficult to compare. Actually, I'm going I'm to try to give it a shot. So we talked about Brel and we talked about Frank Sinatra in the same sentence. And it's true. They're, they're both the singers with a great voice. And even Frank Sinatra had actually done one of um, Brel's songs. But there's something about crooners in the U.S. They, they all seem a little too happy. You know, the crooners, they all kind of have a smile. And Brel is definitely coming from a darker place, like a less fortunate uh, place um, and a love that's a little, a little less uh, easy, I would say. <laughs> um, when we think about Brassens, uh, I think the first thing that comes to mind is like Bob Dylan, of course, um, maybe like Leonard Cohen, but happy, like a happy Leonard. Cohen. And uh, somebody also said a Dr. Seuss for, for adults. And I thought that was a pretty good, uh, because he has a lot of wordplay. Oh, yeah, I totally agree with what you said. And actually, you talked about Jack Brel and uh, his music. And in the United States in 1965, there was a beautiful and hugely acclaimed cover by Nina Simone of his song, Ne Me Quitte Pas. And it, she even sang it in French, which is really rare that she didn't take time to translate it. She just sang it in the language and it was a huge success. And here we are starting to visit blues rather than anything else. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Also about George Brassens, you talked about Bob Dylan, who was for sure a poet, a storyteller, a witness of his time. Uh, I was also thinking about Johnny Cash, who was mm. very 
popular and he had this sometimes he would be a clown you know in his songs in his words making people laugh uh have a smile about the stories he was telling and in, in, in the way he was telling them in his songs and also he was talking about country what it was to live in country on the countryside and to yeah, have grown up there So if we talk about Serge Gainsbourg, that's uh, it's kind of hard to place because he's kind of like he's almost like the feels like the first French rock star in a way. Uh, he's, he feels a bit a little bit like the boss where he's kind of talking for a lot of people and 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 it's a really different way of singing. Uh, but he's not a rock. He's not really rock either. Um, I think about um, Jim Morrison, for example, because he was a kind of a poet. He's this dark, mysterious figure. He's buried uh, in Paris uh, as well. And actually, I have a quick story about um, how like when I first heard about uh, Serge Gainsbourg, I was actually walking um, in the cemetery where he's buried in Montparnasse and I, there was a bunch of people around a tomb and they're all like putting down uh, metro tickets and and all this kind of things around his tomb and I was I asked the person I was with I was, what's going on here and they're like oh this is Serge Gainsbourg's tomb and I was just was pretty amazed by the number of people who were just standing there on the anniversary of his death I think and they were just talking about talking about Serge Gainsbourg I was like wow this guy must have really affected a lot of people uh, yeah for sure he is for sure a legend even today uh, people visit the place he lived in in Paris Yeah, Rue de Verneuil, and it's pretty amazing. There's all this great v uh, graffiti uh, on the walls outside of his uh, his uh, his house. Yeah, which his family forbid to take off. They want to keep all the graffiti of the fans over the years. And uh, I think it's beautiful and very poetic, actually. Yeah, and I think we talked about Charlotte Gainsbourg a couple episodes ago, who is obviously uh, the the daughter of Serge Gainsbourg. See if we weren't clear about that before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, also, you were talking about how, what would be the equivalent. And about Serge Gainsbourg, when I'm asked that question, what would be the equivalent? I'm thinking like, you know, I guess to me, he would be his own equivalent around the world. Mm. I, I would have yeah. to export him to listen to him anywhere. Even though, you know, for example, he's been translated in English. Um, but just like Jacques Brel, except that Jacques Brel was, there was, there were a lot of covers in the English speaking world in the United States, in Australia, in the UK, in Scotland, mm -hmm. in Ireland. For Gainsbourg, I, I think that the best would be to just export him and listen to him everywhere. Yeah. Because I saw that like some of his songs in the in the 60s were actually hits in the U.S. as well, directly in French, you know, and that's um, that's pretty rare, I would say, today that a French song would be, a, be on the top 40 uh, in, in the U.S. today. Yeah. Also, I would say Serge Gainsbourg as a, was a fantastic songwriter, and he makes me think of, I would say, Pharrell Williams today, who we know as a singer, um, but also Pharrell Williams has just made all the big, the big hits in, in the last 10, 10, 15 years. So uh, Serge Gainsbourg did, did very much the same. Okay, so we've talked about who these guys are. We've talked about their different types of music and styles. But is there a particular time and place when we should listen to Brel, for example? Well, I don't know. I, I guess for all, all three of them, I would advise that you take a moment to really listen to the music. It's really not something that you want to put in the background and just do something else. Meanwhile, there is music playing. You sit and listen to it, to the subtlety of the music they played and sang. Um, I, I, I tend to think that Jacques Brel is kind of gray uh, and intense and very emotional. So when I'm depressed, I wouldn't listen to him. But I don't know, because maybe if you're a fan, it helps you when you're depressed. True enough. I, yeah, I would say um, for me, I have a memory of listening to Brassens in car rides for some reason because you have kind of the time to focus on what he's trying, what he's saying. And um, Gainsbourg, I would put maybe like in a cool uh, cosmopolitan bar in New York. That would be like the ideal place to listen to Gainsbourg. It seems the most fitting anyway. But I agree that they all. It seems like you need to almost be alone to listen to a lot of uh, a lot to a lot of their songs. Yeah, I agree. Actually, I think this is a really good idea. What you just said about New York and Gainsbourg. It it sounds. Like a very good idea. <laughs> so I think the thing is, is that, okay, we, we, they, they all have something to love, I think. And, I th and we've talked about this, but I think there's one thing that's kind of interesting is that, is that when I was listening to this, for example, preparing with my wife, she was like, oh, but just listen, but just listen. And in fact, I think as an American, I don't listen to music in the same way as French people. Uh, for example, you have this, this, whole, this whole kind of genre, it's called the chanson à texte. So it's like, you know, songs with, with, you just have to listen and understand the text. And in fact, the texts are really difficult for an American. I've been in France for 20 years and I have to like really concentrate trait to get this down. This is maybe driving with Brassens is not a good idea because I want a pen and a piece of paper and a dictionary to see what he's talking about. So I think there, there is like when, when you listen to the Beatles, it's like eight days a week. Okay, well, that's easy. You know, you, you get it pretty quickly. But when you're listening to Brassens or Brel, it's like, wow, you really have to dive in 
and uh, and kind of and and follow the follow the story of what the song is about. So, so Marriott, maybe we should guide our listeners and tell them, okay, where should they start? With what songs could they start with? Mm, actually, I would advise two songs for Jacques Brel to discover his music. It would be Ne me quitte pas mm -hmm. and Quand on a que l'amour. Two okay. very beautiful songs, but also about Jack Brel. You can discover him through the many covers of David Bowie, Nina Simone, Scott Walker, many, many beautiful things in English. Yeah, I would just add my son's favorite uh, is Vesoul, uh, where you have that kind of oh, yeah. French accordion behind there. So that's a pretty, I would say, t traditional French song. As for Georges Brassens, there are so many songs that I think are... are uh, more accessible when you understand French. <laughs> but as for start, um, I would advise Je me suis fait tout petit. <laughs> and I don't know how petit. it will go for people who speak English but not French, but it the melody and the guitar are good in this song. So it's accessible even if you don't understand the words, even though the words are brilliant. Je me suis fait tout petit. Okay. Uh, and so many others, but I would say um, just start with that one. Okay, I'm going to add uh, les bons publics, uh, les amoureux des bons publics. And because it's kind of something that you can sing along, like at least bon public, bon public. So I think that that's a kind of a good start. What about Gainsbourg? About Serge Gainsbourg, I would start with a song that I love very much, uh, which is called L'Anamour, L and then A-N-A-M-O-U-R. Um, it's really beautiful in the melodies and the words, and it's very romantic, and I love the orchestration of this song and the voice he has singing it. In a more jazzy sound, there's also Letitia, the name, mm -hmm. the girl name, which is brilliant music to me okay. and poetry. Okay, I'm going to have to check that one out myself. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah, you okay. have to. <laughs> uh, for me, in fact, I, I found myself putting on his album and just leaving the entire album. Uh, in particular, Initials BB is a great album. It's from the 60s, 68, and you really kind of have that 60s groove that's so good. And in fact, like even like the first little hook of every song is just, it works today. And in fact, I started with Gainsbourg on his reggae album, and it's called Aux Armes, Etc. Uh, and that's where he has the famous Marseillaise that's sung to a reggae beat, and it's really cool as well. Well, I hope everybody's enjoyed discovering uh, these three artists. I've certainly had a good time doing the research. Yeah, it was so pleasant to talk about them. And I strongly advise that you discover them. They're worth listening to and discovering. Even though all of them are dead and they're not Beyonce, it's still worth discovering for sure. Definitely. I really enjoyed delving into these three singers. Okay, enjoy, everybody. Have a good time. Bye, Mariot. Bye, Thierry. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please follow us on Instagram and let us know what you love about France. Maybe it'll be our next episode. Allez, until next time, à bientôt. À la prochaine.